Today we're going to take a look at mempool running on an embassy. Mempool is a block explorer. Now what is a block explorer? A block explorer is a way for you to view what's happening on the Bitcoin network in a much friendlier way than querying a Bitcoin node directly. So let's say we want to find out what the latest block is. To do it with a Bitcoin node directly, we've got to do this. Bitcoin dash CLI get block count. Great, our node just told us the height of the latest block found and added to Bitcoin's blockchain. But who really wants to use command line for this? Wouldn't it be better to use a beautiful graphical interface instead? So I'll go back to my embassy. I'll click on mempool. Let's go through. I can see here that all the health checks are green. That's embassy OS's way of telling us that this service should be working properly. I'll just click on launch UI. And now here we are. We can see the most recent block. It goes from right to left. These are blocks that are yet to be found. These are blocks that have already been found. This is the most recent block. You can just click on this block and you can see all the transactions that are in it. And then you can click on any of those transactions to get information about it. If you click on a block that's pending, you can click on any of the transactions that are, that are presumably going to be in it. So I'm going to click on this transaction here and we can see it's estimated to be if it's very lucky, it will just make it into this next block here. But the minute a few more transactions come in that are paying a higher fee than 1.3 sats per byte, it will probably slip down into this block. The arrow below points to which block mempool expects the transaction to finally end up in. And the further left it is, the less of a chance it has making it into that block. So let's go back to the main interface here and look at some of the other features you've got on mempool. You've got a transaction fee estimator, when you make a transaction in Bitcoin, you need to pay a fee to the miners in order to get them to put your transaction in a block. If the blocks miners are mining are absolutely full of transactions, then there's likely some transactions left that aren't getting included in blocks by miners. Those transactions will be the ones paying the lowest fees. So when you pay a low fee in Bitcoin, sometimes if you pay the lowest fee of one sat per byte, you might have to wait a while before there's enough space in blocks that a miner actually decides to put your transaction in a block. If you want to jump to the front of the queue, paying a higher fee than everyone else is how you can usually ensure that you'll definitely get in the next block. Transaction fees are something that are best done manually because wallets tend to not estimate what the fee should be very well. Here you have some information about difficulty adjustment. It's told us that we have 1745 blocks remaining for the current difficulty period. That's just under two weeks. It's estimating that the difficulty is going to increase by 2.48%. It tells us that the previous adjustment was down 2.14%. And here it gives us a percentage of how far through the period we are. We just found a new block as well. And you see it coming in there in real time. Here you get a picture of the mempool. These are transactions waiting to be confirmed in the blockchain. The lower down the color is, the less that transaction is paying and the less likely it is for a miner to put it in the blockchain as they make more fees from including transactions that pay higher amounts. Up here you have the transactions that do pay higher amounts and that's why those are the first to get put into blocks and these are the last to get put into blocks. Here you have a visualization of what the transactions incoming into the network have looked like over the last recent period. Occasionally you get things that look like spikes here when a lot of transactions happen at once. Here you have some basic info about the latest blocks, namely which pools have mined them, their block heights, the amount of transactions in them and the size of those blocks. And here you can just watch as new transactions get broadcast to the network and picked up by our node. If you click through to the second tab, this tells you more about hash rate distribution and difficulty. Blocks will now be labeled with which pool mined them. It will give you a nice breakdown here of the percentage of hash rate that's pointed at each of the pools. You've got Foundry here, which is the pool with the largest amount of hash rate at the moment, averaging on about 25.6% of the total hash rate of the network. Up here you have an estimate of what the average fees are per transaction reward per transaction and the total miners reward per 144 blocks 144 blocks taking roughly 24 hours that means that miners are earning roughly 18 million between them per day this you've already seen in the previous screen and this red line here shows you the past seven or eight difficulty adjustments we see here that we see here that the difficulty fell and it's been rising since if we scroll down latest blocks we've already seen on the previous page Adjustments, again, is showing us information about the difficulty adjustment periods. On the third tab, you can view a repeat of the information available on the main dashboard, but in a more TV screen friendly way. And you can decide what it is by clicking on this drop down menu here. 
The fourth screen just shows you unconfirmed transactions and again a repeat of the visualization of blocks as they get added or are about to be added. This page I would use for a halving party if we're sitting there counting down blocks. If we head back and click on the fifth tab, here we've got all the documentation which goes extensively into the things you can do with mempool and also just gives a lot of information about how Bitcoin itself works. And on the last tab, you have some information about the various sponsors and people that help keep this project alive. Now before I end the video, I want to mention that public block explorers exist, and by public, I mean that they are attached to nodes not run by you, but do be careful when you use these. There is a hosted version of this exact service on mempool.space, but hosting your own block explorer is vastly better for two primary reasons. The first is that all the information in there has been verified by your own node, so you know that it's true, and the second is privacy. If you're searching for addresses or watching a transaction you've just broadcast, waiting for it to get included in a block, that is information that you shouldn't be sharing with a third party. You don't want people that run nodes on your behalf knowing which addresses and transactions are of particular interest to you because it's none of their business and it's something that you should do everything you can to keep private. Running your own block explorer that sits on top of your own node means that you don't compromise your privacy and you can be sure of the information you're looking at. This is sovereign Bitcoining.